here we are. Um, last night, we talked about reverse applique, and then we talked about, um, you know, like your shadow work embroidery, right? <clears throat> so there's another embroidery technique. Yeah. It's called Australian window pane. And the name was supposedly made up by Martha Pullen. I don't know if that's true or not, but Meg said she's never heard of it. But the story supposedly goes that when she was in Australia, she saw this wonderful cut work. And the cut work had, um, like, you know, organza sheer fabric behind it. So since you could see through it, she goes, oh, it looks like a window pane. But there's a couple of things that you can do that with, you know, this Australian <laughs> window pane technique that's quite interesting. It, it really gets a little more heirloomy on some level, but it's a, a neat little um, technique to know how to do. Because, you know, last night we talked about putting organza behind something because, um, you know, it kind of supported some of those points and, you know, sharp angles on cut work, right? And Australian window pane kind of goes along those lines. So, I'm going to go ahead and just insert an image. And I think you guys have this image. I really don't like Windows 8. But I think you guys have this image already, right? This one? Which one? Can you guys see my Which screen? One? With the little yes. daisies? The okay. daisy? Mm-hmm. I don't know if I've got that or not. Okay, I'll upload it with this video I think again. We, I think we do. Yeah, I think it's way back. I'll end up uploading it again. But I'm going to go back through a couple of videos real quick. because, Or a couple of images. Because I want you to kind of think in terms of what you can do with this technique. And we find my documents. I have all the stuff here. Windows 8 is just... You'd think I'd be used to it by now, right? But I'm really not used to it yet. Mm. Okay, so when we were doing the lace, there it is. That's the image I want. Okay. See how this one in particular. Okay, this is just stitched on top of, um, you know, like a base fabric. And then it's probably not even cut out. It's just on sheer and then sheer over top of it kind of design, right? This one, though, mm -hmm. if you okay. look at it, this is, you know, massive cut work placed on top of, um, you know, a sheer base, right? And then this one over here right. is just plain cut work. Okay, this would be more along the lines of window That's pane. That's a tight dress. Yeah, it's a little too tight for her up there with those little wrinkles there, although I should talk, right? But... If you look like at this one right here, <laughs> I know, we're, you know, we're so picky, right? But if you look at like this up in here, she's got the organza, you know, underneath this cut work. But what's neat about the window pane technique is, you know, you can, you know, it's not just the clear cut work you can put behind it. You can put like a color behind it. And, you know, now there's a bazillion different colors out there, right? But when you go to get the organza, uh -huh. um, there's a bunch of different kinds of organza. There's the kind of organza that's a little stretchy, and then there's the organza that has a little sparkle to it, and then there's the, you know, organza that, um, you know, is more along the lines of what we're used to. There's silk organza, there's, you know, polyester organza. You know, most of us have access to polyester organza that doesn't shift. Organza and organdy, okay, um, are two of the best mm -hmm. stabilizers you will ever use for embroidery because not the stretchy organza, but the non-stretchy organza because it is just a very rigid fabric even if it has some flow, right? See how this is puffing here and see how those pleats are nice and crisp? Mm -hmm. That's because of the nature of the fabric. Mm -hmm. And that nature makes it a very good fabric to stabilize with as well. Okay? So if we did something like this, okay. we could put, you know, like an organza behind this, right? 
and you know maybe make this in white so white on white or something with a little pale pink behind it or a pale yellow <coughs> would be more along the lines of an heirloom technique if you wanted to make it wild colors you could do that as well or you could do just tone on tone but my because you know window pane really implies that it's a little bit bigger I would probably in just enlarge this pattern right and just pick one of these flowers you know one or one or two of them maybe to work on and make it big enough so that you know that window pane technique is going to really stand out and it's really very similar to the reverse applique that we did except that you are not necessarily going to cut away the organza in the back it depends on you know how you're applying it right if you're going to apply it on um, you know like another sheer layer on top that you're stitching on top of then you know you might want to leave it on the back or if you want it to be a little see-through and you're going to put like a, a lining behind it then you would want to cut it away so you didn't have that double layer of organza you know you're going to have to make that decision based on the hand of your you know your fabric because the organza can get pretty rigid right so if you have two layers of rigid kind of fabric it might be a little bit more body than you want to your garment right now if you're you know going to cut this away and you're putting like a, a soft cotton or a silk on top where you need a little body behind it then leave the layers you know of organza in place just treat it like a lining does you know that make sense um, quilts like for quilting if you want to do this like as a quilting technique and you know um, you wouldn't necessarily do the you know the clear behind it unless you were doing it all the way through and doing kind of an odd little quilt but you know in that case you'd want to cut the organza away because it's going to be crisp underneath your quilt fabric you know the cotton fabric <coughs> does that make sense but um, I think so yeah I mean you know when you think of organza you know a lot of people think of organza I'm going to move the controls here because they're kind of in the way you know they think of organza and they think of that twinkle stuff that you get at Joann's that has like you know like a bias to it right real organza does not have mm -hmm. much of a bias at all that's what makes it so um, good for like stabilizing embroidery but it's also what makes it kind of crisp you know so you know you're gonna have to decide mm -hmm. what you're doing with the back of this based on what you're using it for if you're cutting that away or you're not cutting it away bear in mind that organza frays quite a bit so you know that's why you might not necessarily want to cut that away real close you're, you're gonna want to have a little bit around it because it's gonna fray and shift as you move or wash it so on this you're really just gonna treat this like it's an applique and because I want this to be a little more open I may you know make these a little more narrow right although this flower is pretty good size these will probably be you know pretty decent size holes right but I would not use the automatic mm -hmm. applique you know basically what you need is to attach the fabric you don't have to do all this detail so you know I would use the running stitch and I would just come around and you know trace in here right and you know if you have like something like this you might have to you know alter this a little bit right or if you're going to do double these flowers you can go like this we'll just pretend we're doing double these flowers right mm -hmm. that's all I need to do is attach that fabric in the back that's all I have to really do is attach that fabric in the back right once it's attached mm -hmm. then I can you know put the other stitches on it but you know this is my if I am cutting something out and placing it on the back this would be my placement line probably should have gotten rid of the hoop so I could see a little better huh mm -hmm. now 
Now, you know, you can do this as reverse applique too, but I'm going to take this type this uh, technique one step further, which is a little more heirloomy. You know, to me this would be heirloomy, but it's going to be a little bit modern too, right? Because you're putting organza behind it, we can do a lot of different things with you know, we don't have to put all of this design in there. Does it, you know, like what we see here, we don't have to put all of it in. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Okay, there's my outline. Let me get rid of the hoop so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, there's my outline. You know, I would edit on the places that I kind of didn't see well or need adjusted. You know, because this is going to be, you know, what you're using for your, your base outline, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is, you know, my outline. Now, one thing that we haven't really talked a lot about in the program is if I go into my object details, <coughs> when I look at my single run line, my stitch length is two millimeters, right? I could change this every single time if I wanted to, because two millimeters is very small, I usually go up to 2.5 or 3, right? So I could go in there and I could change this mm -hmm. every single time. Or, if you know that you're going to change those running stitch lengths every single time, there's an option that you have in the setup. You go to setup, and then you're going to go to object details. Hold on, let me get rid of that. Okay, this is going to give me everything, right? I could come in and say, you know, on this I want it to be three. And, you know, parallel, you can set all of these options, right? Okay, and say okay. Mm -hmm. Another option that I have is in my work environment. Okay, in my work environment, I can come in and I can make these changes as well. Okay? If I change things here, like if I really don't want this yellow or, you know, I want fabrics to show instead or I want the grid to be different, I can make the changes in here and I can save this, right? And it says this is going to affect mm -hmm. my new designs based on my template normal. What that is is normal, your normal template is like your default, okay? So if I make this change, if I go forward and I say OK, and I resave this over my normal template, right, then my new normal is going to be what I changed in here. All right? Does that make sense? Yes. OK. So, you know, those are a couple of options that you have. Now, let me cancel. The other option that you have, this you know, if we go in and we start looking at, you know, manage our fabrics, right? We could come in here and we could pick a fabric. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I could say, you know, set up, you know, choose a fabric, sorry. And I could pick a fabric that would set my settings for everything. In most cases, you know, if you remember to do this great, then you don't have to worry about any of these settings generally. But it's always a good idea to know what you're doing with these settings, okay? The other option in setup is my software options. Okay, when you get this, just cancel because this, I'll explain what this is for because I get asked about this all the time. Um, this is the serial number of your software. That's the identity code of your dongle, right? If you were to purchase like the yeah. cross stitch module, you wouldn't get a new code you wouldn't get a new dongle, you would get a new code to add to this section here. So if you added the cross stitch, then you would add your code in here and it would activate that cross stitch. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Y'all just keep right on, I'm watching. <laughs> anyway, so when you're, when you're in your, you know, your setup, you know, look at these things, set work area we're going to cover when we get to the massive designs. You know, object details, 
you know, that's going to be whatever selected or, you know, basically what I've set. See, there's my new line stitch, right? That's my new run, single run. If I mm -hmm. want to say, you know what, really, I want to make that triple run, three, two, then what I've got is my new settings for this design. Um, oh, sorry, let me select this. Single run is, you know, going to be three. My triple run is going to be three. So instead of going in every single line, I can do this at the beginning. Does that make sense? Yes. So, you know, if you know you're going to change that setting all the time, just change it before you get started. All right, so now I've got my outline, and this is going to attach the two pieces of fabric together, you know, whatever I'm using, cotton and then the organs on the bottom, right? That's going to attach it. I still need to cut, but I want to attach and make sure that that is attached first. If you're hooping both fabrics, you can do this in two steps. That's going to attach the outside, and then I have to make a decision what I'm cutting away from this top fabric, right? So, your next line. So what is going to be the, the uh, top of the fabric? Um, Which the, one's going to be? Is your, it going to be the, the organza side or the fabric side? Okay, if we're going to do um, like that dress, you know, with the, the heavier stitching and then the organza underneath, right? Mm -hmm. The organza is underneath. This is similar to reverse applique. So you have a very uh, sheer fabric on the top and the organza on the back. You can, or you can use a heavier fabric and then put the organza below it. But, you know, that, you know, the dress that we looked at, one of the examples that, you know, I showed you was with two very sheer layers. With the, One layer has a lot of stitching on it, right? Mm-hmm. <coughs> and the second layer underneath is another layer of organza and because there was it was crisp that dress was somewhat crisp I would bet they used a silk organza on that because it's got a little nicer hand than the polyester okay so anyway this line that we created is my it attached those two layers together now what I need to define and I can do this all in one step you know one stitching step is where am I cutting am I going to cut these out you know, how wide are they going to be? And, you know, once I make that decision, I can select my running line, and I can say, okay, here is this first line that we're going to cut away. And, you know, I decide I want to make these a little more dramatic, right? So, you know, we're going to add a little drama and make this a little bit wider. Let me move that over. And all I have to do is make one good one of these. That's all I have to make. Cut and paste. Yep. Okay, and I want to do a little curve here if possible. So I'm going to right click in there. Okay, now what I've got, let me zoom in so you can see what exactly I've got. Um, here is, you know, my what I'm going to cut away. Now, if that's not exactly what you want, you know, select it and go and edit. Like, I might want to adjust a little bit here, you know, pull this down or pull it over a little bit and maybe make that, you know, a little wider, you know. Just, you know, this is where you're going to have to adjust this. And then down here, remember I said I wanted to have, I'm going to move my in and out points, I wanted to have, you know, a little bit of a curve at the bottom. I might have to come in here and go like that. But, you know, your in and out points, you want to make sure they're in the same spot. Yes, yeah, Shirley. She just popped in? Let me see. Uh-huh. Hey, Shirley, can you hear us? Shirley, can you hear us? Okay, so there's my my first section, and, you know, I've got it exactly how I want it, I think. I might have to adjust it, you know. It's probably a little bit too wide. Maybe I'll make it a little more narrow. Let 
Okay, so there's my first section. Now, I am not going to repunch this every single time. What I'm going to do is, you know, I can go up to edit and duplicate, or I can use a keyboard control, or a keyboard command, control D, and duplicate this. And what this does, let me move this out of the way for a second. If you look, you've got, um, you know, two of these now, right? So I'm going to select that. I'm going to left click on it and make sure you get the line. Left click on it and left click on it a second time to get the rotate. See these little open boxes and this little circle? I'm going to put my mouse over that little circle. It's called a pivot point and I'm going to wait till I get the four way arrow and I'm going to drag it down to the middle. Okay? Then I'm going to put my mouse over here and I'm going to drag that second piece into place. Okay. So now I've got two done, right? Let me see. Shirley, can you hear us at all? Let me check on her and see if she can hear us or... We cannot hear you if you can hear us. Okay, Shirley can hear us. We just can't hear her. Okay, so now that I've gotten two of these done, right, I'm not going to do each individual one. I'm going to left click here, hold my control key, and left click on that second one. Now I've got both of those selected, right? Edit, duplicate. Mm -hmm. Left click. And if, if you miss this, like if you don't click on the line, it'll unselect it. Just come over here and select them out of here. Move your circle down to the middle again, right? And come over to the open corner and drag. And, you know, you can use the arrows on your keyboard to fine-tune adjust, okay? Whoops. Okay, so the arrows on your keyboard are going to let you move this. See, see the pattern moving around? You're so mm -hmm. smart. Okay, so now I've got four of these done, right? So I'm going to go up here, hold my shift key, and click on that last one. All four are selected. I'm going to edit duplicate. Because if I do edit copy, then I have to do edit paste. But if I do duplicate, then I, that's one less step, right? Come over here and click on this. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the lines. Now all four of these are selected. Move that to the middle. And I'm going to rotate all four of these around. Okay, so, let me hide the image and I'll show you what, what, what we've got. Okay, see what's going on net with, like, where we're going to cut now? Yes. And even this, even though this is, you know, not perfectly circular, that's not going to be a problem. Okay, so let me turn on, I'm going to go back to regular view and turn on the image again. Okay, now... We've got this other piece up here. You know, you might want to check where these pieces are. Like, you know, where I'm going to end is going to be down here. I would have a big jump. So, you know, you might want to organize those a little bit better, right? But if it's a jump on this, it's not that big of a deal. So you have a jump, you just cut it, you know, because this is your guideline, right? But this is pretty much the same as this. So I'm not going to punch all of those. I'm going to come over here and left click, hold my shift key, click on that. I'm going to edit duplicate and I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to come up here and, and immediately group it because that keeps all of these pieces together. And then I'm just going to move it over here, line it up. I'm going to hold my shift key 
and I'm going to resize it. And you can see it resizes. If I hold the shift key, it resizes evenly, right? Right. Yep. And I may, you know, I may want to click on this and rotate a little. If I feel like I need to move these pieces around a little bit, I would need to ungroup it. But what I've got, if you ignore the image, what I've got is the perfect place to cut. You know, I've got, these are pretty good. I might move this a little bit, right? You know, slide it over a little, mm -hmm. maybe shrink it down a little bit more. But if you turn off the image, you can line this up with what you've punched. And, you know, if you feel the need to shrink this down a little bit more, just shrink it a little bit more by holding the shift key until it's, you know, really what you want it to be. Okay, so if we get rid of the image, we've got a pretty good base here, right? Uh -huh. Okay, so and that, that took probably just five minutes. If you really come down to it, about five minutes to do. Oh, yes. It did. You know, without, <laughs> without me talking, um, you know, without stopping and explaining, if you guys are just doing that, you know, all you have to do is punch two things pretty accurately. The outline, the original outline, and your first petal. That's it, right? <coughs> Everything else, you know, you're going to yes. just copy and paste. Okay, so... You can leave the image off or you can leave the um, image on. It's really up to you. To me at this point, you know, it, it doesn't make too much difference. We've got our outline. Now we're going to stop. All of this is now stitched out and we're going to stop. And we're going to very carefully cut away inside here with an X-Acto knife. Okay, or with very sharp little scissors. All right. So, okay. I'm going to get rid of this now. The organza's on the back. We've got this done. Now we have to put a nice top or cover stitch on this. And you can do this in abundance, you know, different ways. But since this is floral, you know, let's look at doing, you know, something in here, each one of these individually maybe. I guess we'll have to pick a place to start and you know, bearing in mind that you would want these to be on top. So we'll start like over here. Your best bet is probably going to be to use, you know, this tool. But since this is organza, you know, I don't want you to, let me move these controls, they kind of get in the way sometimes. I don't want you to not think in terms of what you can do with this turning angle contour fill. It kind of gives you a neat little option. So if I'm going to do this, let's start here. I'm going to kind of line this up like this, right, and go over. I'm going to extend past these lines. These are now basically my image. And I want to show you what this contour does, okay, just so you get an idea. And I'm going to do this in pieces because ultimately, you know, I have to kind of stop and deal with each little flower petal. Okay, see how that contour looks? Isn't that neat? Yes. Okay, then I would switch over to that running stitch. See where that little square is? That's where I end, and I'm just going to run down here. And I'm going to pick up you know, I might want to, yeah, I guess this is probably the best way. I'm going to pick up here. Make sure I overlap there, right? I'm going to come around and do this petal. I'm going to make sure I overlap onto this piece. Bernie, would it be wise to put a second line in where you're going to cut like you do with the reverse applique? Just you inside can. the one we have? 
you can if you want. Um, on if you're using organza, that's pretty stable. You know what I mean? Don't get the like the shifting. Yeah. You know, stretchy kind of organza. Get the, the good organza if you're in a, you know, you don't have to get a lot of it. And I'm going to adjust this just to make sure that covers that line, right? Okay, let me zoom in. And because I'm playing with the contour fill, I might, you know, I might have to adjust this a little bit more than what I want to. Okay, so... There's my second, second section, right? And, you know, if I'm stitching, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to probably put like a line around this, a very thin line. But I've got this section, right? I started here, came here, did a run stitch. And if I look over here, you know, let me change the color too. If I look over here, right, I've got those three sections. And all I really need are these two pieces from this point on. I'm going to edit duplicate and I'm going to go ahead and group those. And I'm going to treat this exactly the same way as I did those other petals, right? I'm just going to swing this around to make sure that my lines get covered. You know, if I have to adjust a little bit, that's not a big deal, but so far it's looking pretty good, right? Now I've got, you know, these four sections that I can do. Edit, duplicate, you know, let's group those together. Click on them. Um, make sure you're clicking on, you know, what you need. There we go. Double click. Take that little dot to the middle again. And you're just going to keep doing this until you get all the flowers done. And if you have to adjust it, remember that goes automatically back to the center. Just move that back to the center, right? Yeah. And then move that it's over. It's really pretty. It, it's, you know, really different. And let me go back to 100% so you can see what it looks like. It is. It's, you know, it's something a little bit different, <coughs> especially in light of, you know, the fact you've got an organza or organy underneath this. That's a very stable fabric. Um, this is going to hold that in place. I'm still going to really want to be careful. Like, I might want to fray check the edges there, right? But, you know, other than making sure you get these lined up, and maybe having to adjust, you know, individually somewhere, you know, and if you do, like, if you do have to adjust individually, um, you know, remember, we group this, right? Let me show you what happens when I group things. This isn't grouped. These two are. See how those two are highlighted in blue? All of these are now grouped. So if I need to edit something, I'm going to have to come up here and say edit, ungroup. And then I can get to the, you know, the individual pieces, right? But, you know, I've got now, I only right. need three more petals covered. So if I select this, I know I start with the running line, right? And I come down to here, you know, just edit duplicate, um, edit group, just to keep them together. Click on it and just, you know, finish out this flower. And, you know, you would, of course, be a little more logical so you could eliminate some jumps. Like, you know, you might want to start here and go around so you end here, right? And let's move these into place. Oh, yes. Okay, now... I've got something I have to finish here. You know, like, and I would have to edit that. You know, I'd have to move. Oops, me. Undo. This one's good, you know, but I've got to edit some of these to make sure that those are all covered, right? Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure that those, those placement lines are covered well. And then I've got this last piece where, you know, I have to finish this section. So what I'm going to do is, you know, I have to select this and edit ungroup. Okay. I'm going to press B on the keyboard and zoom in around. 
And then I'm just going to left click and then left click to select this last piece. And, you know, just because it's in like rotate mode, don't panic. You can still go up into, you know, your select mode up here, your reshape. And then I'm going to need to pull these down. And, you know, see how I'm overlapping? Don't panic. You know, if you can't figure out where things are, just undo. And then, you know, move them in smaller segments, right? I don't know why I keep losing this. I think because I'm grouped. Hold on. Yep, I'm still grouped on that one section. Ungroup. Okay. Okay, and then just move these in smaller sections, right? See how that, that's kind of whipping around? Don't worry about it right now. Just pay attention to where these nodes are and move them into place. Okay, see how that arced around? Come over here and left click uh -huh. mm -hmm. and add a node to get it to do what you want it to do. Right click to add a curve if you need it to curve. Okay, and then pay attention to where you move that little out point thing to, right? If you need to make it wider, make it wider. Ultimately, you know, we want to end down here, okay? And I'll show you why. Let me zoom out. Okay, there is my nice little flower. And, you know, I probably would edit this a little bit more to match up. But I need to end here because I need to put a center in that flower, right? I could use the fabric if I wanted to. But, you know, the, it's always going to look nicer if I do a center. So I'm going to select, you know, just the circle. And if I come over here and just left click and drag, I get a circle, right? Right. So there's my circle. You know, I might shrink it a little bit. Remember, if you hold your shift key, it shrinks in from the center. But you want to make sure that, that all those little ends are covered. And you could even make this a different color. You could use, you know, a different fill. Um, you know, we didn't cut the fabric out behind it. So you can come in here and do whatever you want with it. You know, what kind of fill do you want? Do you want a radial fill? It won't, um, yeah, it won't let me do the radio fill with that. Do you want, you know, a different pattern to this, right? Do you want it to be, you know, a satin fill? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have all kinds of options here. I would probably go ahead and leave it as, you know, just a weave fill and change it to whatever pattern you want. Make sure that, you know... Your underlay is not ridiculous. That's probably going to be fine. You know, this is decent size, so it needs a little bit. And then you want to give it, make sure that your stretchiness is okay, right? Or that it's on. And there's my flower. Okay? Very pretty. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a little bit different. I would, you know, probably put some kind of edge around this. Um, and we're, you know, we cut, but we've got fabric underneath here, so it's not like these are just hanging in the breeze. They'll be okay, but, you know, you might want to edge this. Okay, and mm -hmm. if you want to edge it, if you select, you know, this piece, right, if you select one piece, or, you know, if you come up and you select the individual pieces, remember, like, if you get something like that, that means you have to ungroup right? The only bad thing about grouping stuff is sometimes right. you really need to come in and ungroup it. And I'll show you why. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that these are all freed up, right? So there's this piece, this piece, and I'm going to hold my control key and start selecting these pieces because I have some really neat tools that I can use to quickly do what I want to do. Okay, first off, let's go and let's look at this contour fill. Okay, we're on a spiral fill, which is nice. You know, we could look at this and see what it does. In this case, it's probably not going to do a whole lot, but you can look at it. If you want to make this a little tighter, and you come in here and you have to hold your mouse and drag it to make, you know, the density a little less. And we'll go maybe 1.2, right? My stitch length, you know, you might want to change that to 3.0. Okay, um, let me undo this. See that? 
see the difference in what this looks like with just a few changes to the settings that's what it was before that's what it looks like after I changed the settings it's got a little more beef to it I made the stitch length a little bit shorter it gives it a, a little more polished feel right okay and I still have these pieces selected see how those pieces are still selected and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say offset object now what this does is it outlines the whole thing okay offset count of one I, that means I'm just going to have one outline around this you know offset zero that'll put it right on the edge since we know there's probably going to be a little bit of pull Let's go down to an offset about maybe 0.10. You can even go like 0.15. Okay, now I'm going to click OK. What happens is this. And this is kind of a neat thing. Each individual item, here's this, it's going to get outlined. Right? Here's this piece. That piece gets immediately outlined. This piece gets immediately outlined. So I can come in here and I can select all of these by holding the control key. And I can move them to the bottom if I want. Personally, I would probably leave them where they are. But I can come up here and I can change it from a single run line to um, a satin line, a sculpture line, you know, a stem stitch line. The stem si stitch line is kind of neat. Remember we played with this a little bit? I'll make that one, uh, you know what, I'm going to make that 1.75. You know, my spacing will knock the spacing down a little bit. Okay? I don't need something heavy. I just need something, you know, to outline this. If I change this, my stitch thickness, and I'm not seeing a whole lot of change here, right? But I'm going to go ahead and say OK now. And what I've got is, see all of that outlined with a, you know, it's a, a nice little finishing stitch. It's light enough to not overwhelm the organza, and ultimately it's going to finish up that flower right right okay so now I've done all that work and of course I was really organized and I made sure that my out points you know that I finished down here somewhere right so all I'm going to do <laughs> is come in and select these two <laughs> colors edit duplicate and you know if I if I was logical enough and I started here and ended here I've got this extra flower, which I'm now going to group, by the way. See my little flower? You might want to flip mm -hmm. it, bring it over here, dead center it, right? And mm -hmm. hold the shift key and stretch that. Apparently that is just lovely. And it only took like two whole whopping seconds, right? It really was not a lot of work. You only did it once. That is so pretty. And other yes, than like making yeah, so sure I line up here, you know, you might have some editing to do, right? But, you know, it's minor editing. Like I can see that line right there. Oh, big deal. I just come in here and go like this. Uh, you know, there's my in and out point. Move the line so I know where the heck that is, right? And get it hidden underneath there a little bit better. That's, you know, that's really not a lot of work. Right? And right. You know, if you do that mm -hmm. outline all as one, you can come in here and you can do this whole thing once you've got the flowers done to make sure everything's lining up correctly. And, you know, like on this, I might not, you know, I might want to pull that out a little bit more or at least make it the same distance around, you know, so that it gets hidden. You know, like this would be a little bit too close. I'd pull that in a little bit so that you didn't have a chance of that, you know, being on the outside, right? And now, picture this because it's a nice little dainty design, right? 
picture this with, you know, sitting on top of a very sheer organza. Like, you wouldn't want to do a whole outfit like that dress. That would take you a long time, right? But picture right. this as, like, the sleeve or an inset on the sleeve to a nice summer blouse or the bottom of a blouse or the hem of a skirt or the hem of, sh of shorts. Something that makes it a little feminine and, you know, adds a nice little light, airy touch to a garment. Or, if you want to get inventive, if you do all of your quilting, there's no law that says you can't make a very sheer organza, you know, border around the outside that is not quilted. Right? Or, lay it on top of the quilt and just tack it down. You know, like, like you know what I'm talking about, like on your border? Even if the other fabric shows underneath uh -huh. all of that organza, this would add a very feminine touch with those sheer fabrics to anything that you added it to. It's pretty. And now there's one more thing, like in setup, if you want to make sure that you actually, um, oh, hold on, I keep hitting save today. You want to make sure that when I like turn my hoop back on, if I want to make sure that this is going to be dead centered, I'm going to go to setup, work environment, and I'm going to tell it to automatically center. Okay, so I'm going to put my hoop back on now. And it's automatically centered the design of my hoop. So, now does that, that make sense? Like the whole process, how we would cut this away? Like here's my placement lines, right? Because you, you're going to have the fabric behind it. If you're right. going to layer the fabric in later, I wouldn't advise it because, you know, organza is shifty. You want to kind of control it. If you're going to put two layers together, you're going to want to hoop them both to make sure they stay in place. You know, if you're making a border, you might even consider hand basting right. every so far you know, on that border just to keep those layers together. Shirley, you have any questions or anything? Can you hear us yet? No, you'd have to. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. <laughs> um, on my control hanging from my earphones, uh -huh. I guess I muted myself. Oh, <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I had a little red light I didn't know what it was for. Yeah, mine has a blue light. And I thought, oh, that's a, such a pretty blue light. And I'm sitting here going, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? And it never dawned on me that that blue light actually meant something, right? <laughs> and I had muted myself. Yeah. Where did it come from? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Um, the blue light. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't there yesterday. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, how pretty. I didn't notice that before. That would be how I looked at it. Oh, I never noticed that. <laughs> I should pay more attention, you know. <laughs> so, Bernie, you'd yeah. have to reduce that whole design to fit in the hoop, correct? Right. And to do that, you just would go edit, you know, select all. Okay. And edit group if you want to make sure everything stays mm -hmm. together. And, you know, then just hold yeah. your shift key. If you're centered and you hold that shift key, see how it just, you can see the outline and you know exactly when to release your fingers to set it in the hoop. Or, if you know that you need it to be a specific size, you can go into dimension with everything selected. You know, go to your object details, right, with everything selected, and go to dimensions. Right. And tell it, you know, I really, you know, I don't want to be stitching this, this all day, so I'm going to take this down to, like, 175. And what happens is, see the percentage here? I only have to change uh -huh. one number, and then I can change the percentage on the second one. But what you have to remember is, like, when I go to hit 8, see how it automatically goes to, like, 10? Down here are sets of, you know, increments of uh, percentages. So when I go to change this, I have to hit the number and then make sure, you know, I might have to hit 888 to get 88, right? Make sure that those percentages are the sh the same, and then just say okay, and it automatically resizes okay. it for me. Okay, when it resizes, okay. does yeah. it lose any stitches? 
Yeah, it's going to take, look down here, I've got like 13,012 stitches, right? If I okay. undo, I go back up to 15,000. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. because I made the design in this program, right? If yes. I change it, technically, mm -hmm. like, what, what the program has done is, technically, I see stitches on the screen, right? That's like a courtesy feature right. when you really come down to brass tacks. I am working with vector outlines for the most part. You know, at this point, it's just a graphic thing on my screen. There really are no stitches in this file yet. That's why okay. when you say that Jan file, that's your yes. outline file. Once I save this to like JEF or EMD or PES, that becomes a stitch file and it's a whole different ball game. Like I'll show you what happens. If I say file, um, save as, see it automatically goes to Jan, right? So we'll say yes. flowers. <laughs> One. Okay, so I saved my Jan file. Now I'm going to save this as a Jeff file. Save as, you know, I'm going to get ready to send it to my machine, so I'll save it as a Jeff file. Flowers one, Jeff, save. Okay. <coughs> now I'm going to close mm -hmm. this. And let me close your purse. I'm going to go ahead and I want to open this. So I'm going to say file open and it automatically defaults to Jan, but, you know, I want to open the Jeff file, so there's my flowers, okay, there we go. So, here's what, you know, here's what I've got on the flowers, and everything looks the same on the screen until I go over to here. Everything's the same color-wise, right? But if I go to objects, and I start selecting these, you know, it... They look kind of the same right now, but this icon's a little different than what I'm used to, right? It's not a filled icon, right? And when I go to edit, mm -hmm. you know, see the eight bazillion points I now have on that area? You know, because I selected this, right? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. versus if I open up the Jan file. If I open up the Jan file, when I go to select, you know, see how those are showing me the icon for running line, right? That's what it's telling me. That's showing me that it's a turning fill, and I select this piece. Let me ungroup all of this. If I now select this piece and I go to edit, I only get the nodes here, right, compared to... Let me see if I can get this to do this. Uh, we got to get rid of this. Okay. Compared to, you know, what these look like. Hold on. Let me slide this over. Okay. See what that one looks like compared to that? That's my stitch file. Mm -hmm. So it's seeing every single stitch as an editable point. I would lose my mind trying to reshape that, right? But right. this, I can come over here because this is the Jan file, my outline file, and I can just say, you know what, I want it to look like that, right? Right. Versus the other way. So, you know, does that make more sense? Yes. Okay, now those of you guys that have <laughs> the Elna machines, right, like except for the Exquisite, for you guys that have like the, dig the Genome machines or the Elna machines, um, if you save it in the Jan format, that's your editable format. If you save it in Jeff, that's your stitch file. You could copy and paste that over to, um, you know, copy and paste that over to, I can't even think today, it's been one of those days, to your card or your USB port, right? I just lost somebody, heard somebody chime. Oh, Barbara went offline. Let's give her a second because I know she was worried about storms. Um, or you can write to your card or the machine, depending on how you're connected, right up here with these two icons. So if I want to send it out to my machine, if I have the USB plug in my machine, I just click on the machine and it sends it over. If I have, like, my little USB key in my computer and I click on that icon, it lets me write to my card. Let me plug in one of these and I'll show you what it does. Okay, you know when you plug your card into your machine um, for Genome or Elna, right? 
that yes. you mm -hmm. automatically get folders created. Nancy, the yes. exquisite, does it in the software. So when I go to write to my card and I click on this, it's looking for external drives. And here's, you know, my external drive, right? And you can see I've got, um, you know, I need to select it. And then when I look at this, it's got all of these folders, but these folders are technically in the EMB folder. So I can either, you know, select a folder to put this in. Here's my EMBF folder, which the, the program makes. And once I double click and open it, then it'll let me write. Okay? If I have my USB cable, it's going to write to the memory on the machine. Okay. So, let me see if we can get Barbara back in here. I need matching. Yeah, Barbara, I know she was worried about storms. She said she was going to try to stay online. But, you know, we've all had storms this last last um, week in this area and, and probably down in her area, and she's on satellite. So, okay, let me close out my USB port. Um, you guys have any questions on um, this, what we did here? <coughs> No way. You don't want us to do that? Uh-huh. You know it. Is that what we're going to do? Yeah, I'll send well, you the send file. send it on, baby girl. I will now. All right. We're going to look at using Australian window pane in a different way now. Okay, and, and we can do this with just basic kind of shapes.